The new plastic kit for NATO forces is the Leclerc tank for the French. This is a big upgrade for French forces. Fog of War is the content partner for NATO forces, and Battlefront have sent me a sprue of the Leclerc kit to review. Is it any good? Join me and we'll find out together. This is TFBX-10, the French Leclerc tank platoon box set for Team Yankee. Inside the box are five new Leclerc plastic tanks. Given how many points it costs to put a Leclerc on the table, this will be all most French players will need. Leclerc is also available in the Leclerc Tank Company Starter Force box. This box is designed to get a new player up and running with a French armoured force. It contains three Leclerc kits, as well as three AMX-30 tanks, three AMX AUF-1 SP guns, and two Gazelle helicopters. Like I said, Leclerc is expensive, so you're probably going to be fielding a mixed tank force of Leclerc and the earlier AMX-30. You can build the AUF-1s in the box as AMX-30 gun tanks as well if you want more tanks. It's the same plastic kit. This army deal box is only available for a short time, so order it now if you want one. Work on replacing the AMX-30 tank started as far back as the 1960s. After a number of failed ventures, the project that would eventually become Leclerc started in 1986. Leclerc is a third generation MBT. It's light, weighing in at under 60 tonnes. Main armament is the French-designed F1 120mm smoothbore gun. This gun is compatible with NATO standard 120mm ammunition, but has a longer barrel which imparts more energy to the round, increasing penetration. The gun is fed by an autoloader system, with 22 rounds in the carousel and a further 18 rounds stowed in the hull. The autoloader means Leclerc's crew doesn't need a loader, Crew is three men, commander, driver and gunner. The coaxial machine gun is a 12.7mm gun, a heavier calibre than most Western MBTs. There's a 7.62mm gun at the commander's station. Leclerc is well protected, with modular composite armour panels bolted over the chassis and turret faces. This means the armour protection can be easily upgraded to take advantage of advances in composite armour technology. The original passive composite panels were eventually replaced with panels using titanium and semi-reactive armour. There's also an add-on ceramic armour package available. Introduced gradually from 1992, four French armoured regiments currently operate Leclerc. A tropicalised version is in service with the UAE seeing action in the Yemeni civil war. If we look at the back of the Leclerc tank platoon box, there's an exploded assembly diagram and a picture of the completed kit. At 17 parts, it's a slightly more complex kit than usual, but there doesn't seem to be anything difficult here. The platoon box contains parts to build five tanks. At 19-ish points each, that's a significant force in a single box. Let's look at the kit parts. All the parts come on a single sprue of dark green plastic. Quality looks on par with Battlefront's usual excellent moulding. There's plenty of detail for 15mm, and the parts engineering makes extensive use of tabs and sockets to aid with correct placement and increase joint strength. Here's the hull. There's a good level of detail here, including stowage bins, the closed driver's hatch, and plenty of engine deck grills. There's some headlights and towing eyes on the sloped glasses plate. Next up is one of the side skirt pieces. These parts include bolt-on armour panels at the front, as well as rubber skirts along the bottom. The lower hull piece is fairly plain, but has differential keying to make sure you put the tracks on the right way. The right-hand side skirt is here too. The skirts have good-sized locating tabs that fit into slots on the hull to ensure correct placement and provide a solid mating surface. 
Next comes the turret. This is an unusual and recognisable shape. You can clearly see the shape of the bolt-on composite armour panels here, plus there's plenty of other details. The commander's hatch can be posed open or closed. The square hole in front of that is the locating piece for the commander's panoramic thermal sights. The gunner's sight is moulded onto the front face of the turret piece. This hole here is where the commander's machine gun goes. The instructions aren't very clear about placement, but it fits nice and securely into this recess. There's also meant to be a wind sensor on the back of the turret, but it has broken off. That might be something to watch out for in the box sets. This bustle stowage rack fits onto the rear of the turret piece. There's a canvas cover that needs to be glued in first. Don't do what I did and have to try and fiddle the cover into place later. Tracks are one-piece parts. Track detail is simple and undefined, but there's OK bolt detail on the road wheels, and that's the part you'll see. Again, each track set is keyed to ensure correct placement. The right-hand track set on my example had a tight fit, and required a little sanding of the locating pins to get it to fully engage with the hull. You might need to do the same. This is the hull rear. It has some engine grills and towing cable. There's also the mounting points for external fuel drums. These drums are here, along with the commander's machine gun, open and closed hatches, a jerry can, the commander's sight, and the fabric stowage cover. Remember, fit this piece in before attaching the rack to the turret. The last piece here is the CN120F1 gun. This gun is fitted with a thermal sleeve, and I think the boxy thing above the barrel might be part of the muzzle reference system. Or a baguette launcher, who can tell? Here's the completed kit. As usual, the parts fit is good, and it goes together without issue. Battlefront have a wealth of experience with plastic kits in 15mm now, and it shows. There's plenty of guides and locating tabs, and parts like the side skirts cover joints in the hull parts. Nice work, and a thoughtful touch that adds to the quality of the assembled kit. The wind sensor integral with the turret does make this a vulnerable point, so keep an eye out for that. Sprues can be packed into their boxes pretty tight. It's nice to have this unique vehicle in the game. I know it stretches the timeline a bit, but the French needed something heavier in-game to keep them competitive. But the main issue will be cost. Let's take a look. Here's the Leclerc Armoured Platoon. French speakers everywhere are glad I didn't try to pronounce the French title. Leclerc is a tank unit that has the Cobham Armour and Thermal Imaging Special Rules. Despite popular jibes about French soldiers, skill, courage and remount are all 3 plus. Morale is 5 plus however. Assault and counterattack are 4 plus. Leclerc is hit on 4 plus. Front armour is 22, side is 8 and top is 2. There's plenty of protection up front, but don't get flanked. You'll need to run these with screening forces to avoid the enemy getting past you but at least Cobham armour means side armour is 16 against heat weapons. But there's plenty of movement to get out of trouble, with a tactical move of 14 inches or 35 centimetres. Crosses are 2 plus. The 120mm main gun has a 48 inch or 120 centimetre range, with a rate of fire of 2 both halted and on the move. I'm guessing that's thanks to the autoloader. Anti-tank is 23, with the longer barrel giving better performance for penetrator rounds. Firepower is a 2+. Plus. The gun gets the advanced stabiliser rule. This is what gives the longer tactical move, but it does mean only stabilised weapons can fire if the Leclerc moves over 10 inches, and the tank can't assault. The laser rangefinder rule removes the to-hit penalty for firing at targets over 16 inches. You can fire both the 50 cal and 7.62mm machine guns, but only the commander's LMG gets the AA keyword to shoot at aircraft. A lot of French lists let you take the Leclerc, but it's expensive. You can have two Leclerc for 36 points, three for 55, and four for 74 points. 
In a 100-point list, that's a lot tied up in just a few heavily armoured vehicles. The Leclerc Armoured Squadron list acknowledges this by giving you the option to take a cheaper AMX-30 platoon as your second compulsory tank platoon. Otherwise, you'd be struggling to field a legal list in 100 points. The dilemma of high points tank lists are you often get a two-tank platoon option, but that's a big risk. It only takes one bail and an unlucky morale roll for a lot of points to just go away. And remember, morale is 5+. plus. I'd be more tempted to do something like the VAB Infantry Company. You get a wheeled mechanised infantry company with 120mm mortars, Milan anti-tank, and even the VAB T20 fire support section. Then you get a range of tank options including Leclerc. This way, the heavy tanks are still part of your core formation, not a support choice. So, that's the new Leclerc plastic kit for Team Yankee. The kit itself is nice, well-engineered and a fun build. Battlefront's experience with plastic 15mm kits is well represented here. I'd be interested to hear if anyone else had the fit issues I did with the right track part. Easy enough to fix, but make sure you test and dry fit first. Keep an eye out for that wind sensor too. It sticks up high enough off the sprue to potentially be an issue during packing and shipping. As for Leclerc for the French forces in Team Yankee, it's a welcome modern tank alternative. It has great stats and should be a handful for an opponent on the table. But it is a bit anachronistic for the Team Yankee timeline. If you're a historical player, that might bug you. It's also very expensive. I would caution against taking small platoons for morale reasons. Courage and skill ratings are good, but the 5 plus morale might see them run. Breaking the morale of high-priced units is a legitimate tactic your opponent might employ, and that's a lot of points to invest just to have them run away. What do you think about Leclerc? Are you a French player who's keen to add them to your force? Or do you think they're too expensive and your points would be better spent elsewhere? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.